Hello and welcome to the Jazz Ranch. I'm your alter dominant ego man. You can call me Mr. Ego if you like. Welcome hipsters, flipsters, and finger popping daddies and ladies. So glad you joined me. You know, the KH, I've been watching him. He's planning on putting a video on uh, Brazilian music tonight. Now, what does he know about Brazilian music? He's a whitey from the north. He's an Anglo-Saxon. He's like uh, an Englishman. He's a Connecticut Yankee. What does he know? Well, I have a fact for you. You know, one of his first gigs he played was in an all-black club, an all-Afro-American club, and he was accepted. Now, you cannot make these stories up. This is the truth. Well, you know, two of the musicians that brought the uh, Brazilians to the United States were Stan Getz and Dizzy Gillespie. And Stan Getz had this quote. I love this quote. He said, there are four qualities essential to a great jazz man. They are taste, courage, individuality, and irreverence. <laughs> I love the last one. He, what he meant by that was a, a lack of respect for people and things that are generally taken too seriously. Well, that's why I'm here in the alter dominant man, because the cage takes himself too seriously, and I'm sure you do too. And you also have an alter ego. But anyway, oh, here he comes. I got a split. Uh, goodbye. Got Hello, split. friends, and I'm sorry about the alter dominant ego man, but he did make a good point, you know. In other words, we take ourselves too seriously, and actually I created him so that I wouldn't take myself so seriously, so I'd have another side of myself. And we all have that, so uh, that's a good thing to try to understand. But anyway, I have something for you from the movie Black Orpheus, which the music was written by Louise Bonfa and uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim. And I'm going to be playing the theme from Black Orpheus for you, and I'm going to be breaking it down into to a few categories. First, the performance. Secondly, an embellishment of the melody. And then the next step would be easy improvisation and then more complex improvisation. So I hope you enjoy this. Here we go with the theme from Black Orpheus. Starting out on the melody now, I have this introduction. I have a minor ninth in here, so that's nine and the third. Nice interval. Minor second. And the same here. Well, I did it actually, I harmonized it, but I did it like this. I don't see. harmonize it that way. Now I start in with the rhythm now. Let's see. Now what you want to get is this rhythm in the left hand. So you want to get... But you have to feel that rhythm on the beat. Even eights, not swing. Like it's in like... It's even. Um, it's like, so it's, instead of being in one, uh-uh, it's like one, uh, 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 mm. So that's just the one to the two to the five, like. <laughs> 
So it's important that you understand that basic rhythm and you get that happening in your left hand. So that's not easy to do. That's you want to practice that just just in the left hand and then chording in the right hand. You want to use a metronome. You want to do what, whatever you need to get that steady, like one, two, boom, boom. That's off the beat there. That's the basic rhythm that's going on. Just play the tune. You have to have that rhythm. And if you don't get that, then you can't even play the song. You have to get the basic rhythm of the bossa nova. So it's very intricate in the way it... important. Embellishing the melody just means I'm going to little things like that. I'm just going to change the rhythm a little bit, add extra notes in the right hand. Instead of just going there, I'm going to go. And there was little things just to embellish the melody. That's the important thing about step two. Step three, now I'm going to not play the melody, but I'm going to play a very simple improvisation, like maybe. Now 
Now you have to know what scale you're playing. We're, we're not going to go into this, but the idea is that you're playing melodic ideas here in the right hand that complement the chord and the scale of that chord. Now if I were just to take and analyze the scale of that every chord in this song, I would this would be like a 50 minute video. I'm not going to do that. I just want to show you the essential thing that you want to to get a melodic sense of the melody and the chords underneath it and what scales you can use with those chords and then create a new melody that's very simple. Step four is advanced, meaning you need to really understand steps one, two, three before this. In other words, how to create a play on a melody, how to embellish it, how to play simply, improvising simply. You have to go through those steps and master them. You know, like melody, and then melody embellished. And then improvisation, simple. And then fourth step would be more complicated improvisation, like. Now you may say, well, how do you do that? Well, it's. A lot of it is by ear, hearing the chords. A lot of it is also by knowing the scales of each chord and the, prog the chord progression. So I have covered that in previous videos. So write to me and we'll cover that in detail. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch. Thanks so much for joining me. Until next time, I will say in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, swing loose. And we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.